Hey everybody and welcome back to Lindsay's Little Library. So today is Booklist Thursday and Booklist Thursday is something I do with Sarah over at Sarah's Nightstand. We come to you every Thursday with some sort of book thoughts, ideas, recommendations, something bookish related. So today um, our theme is atmospheric books. So books that in my mind like I can vividly see where we are. I can vividly see either the world we're in or the location we're in or the circumstances we're in. And I have a list of them that I still think of these places on a regular basis. I have, um, I think six books I want to talk about because they're that good. So let's hop right in. The first one I have is Next Year in Havana by Chanel Clayton. This one, I felt like I was in Cuba. So this follows, there's dual timelines. We have Havana, Cuba, 1958, as um, Eliza is young and kind of um, Cuba's on the brink of a bit of a revolution and their family is considering fleeing the country. So then we have present day Miami where um, Marisol, who is El El Elisa or Eliza, I'm not sure how you say it, it's her granddaughter and um, Elisa has passed away and Marisol is kind of given this direction to take her ashes back into Cuba, which is kind of where Elisa, that's where she loved, she loved Cuba and wants, she wants Marisol to actually experience Cuba the way it is. Um, this takes place, I guess, in 2017, where kind of um, people were just kind of starting to be able to visit Cuba again. Um, and Marisol kind of comes face to face with some secrets and some questions that she needs answered while she's in Cuba. But I can vividly picture the streets of Cuba, the house she stayed in, um, where she went. Um, it just, the atmosphere was spot on. Um, the book for me was a little slow, but I definitely felt completely in the story. So there's book number one. The next one I have is Where the Crawdads Sing by Delia Owens. This follows our main character, what's her name, Kaya. Um, she is deemed the marsh girl and the way Kaya explains where she lives, which is basically in the middle of a marsh and she has a boat that kind of goes through all of these different waterways and passageways and I can seriously follow her and um, I guess the trees and the vegetation that surrounds her, she and the beach when she's on the beach with the birds, I could almost hear waves. It was so, so atmospheric. So this follows our story of Kaya in the late 19, late 1969. Um, Kaya had a really, really rough life growing up. She was basically, she had to be pretty independent pretty quickly. Um, she didn't have a whole lot of schooling. Um, it was rough. It was a rough life. Um, and then some things happen with a boy in town and it goes from there so it's a fantastic book I loved it highly recommend I'm sure you've heard other people recommend this one but again the atmosphere if you want to take a really awesome visit down to North Carolina and sit on the coast without actually going there this will this will take you there easily easily take you there all right the next book I want to talk about is no exit by Taylor Adams this follows our main character as she is trying her hardest to get home because her mother she just found out is kind of dying from cancer, is not going to be a lot around very often. So she leaves college and she's trying to get there even though it's in the middle of a snowstorm. She ends up having to pull over at a wayside because she just literally cannot drive any further. And you feel like you're in a snowstorm. And I may have read this during a really significant snowstorm um, that we were having. So that may have helped with the atmospheric vibes of it. But... I think it would still be atmospheric um, for anyone else. So she pulls over and she realizes she's not the only one there. There's, I think, four other people at this wayside. Um, and so she goes and kind of introduces herself and then ends up asking, you know, she's trying to get reception to let her sister know that, like, she's trying to get there, but she can't get there. Um, and the one guy tells her, yep, go outside, kind of by the flagpole. I got some reception there before. You should be able to make a phone call. So she walks out there in the middle of the storm to try to make this phone call. She's not getting any reception. As she walks back, she walks a different way and walks by this van and notices 
there's a little girl locked in a cage in the back of this van in the middle of the snowstorm and now she's stuck here with these four people and she doesn't know whose car this is where this girl came from why she's stuck out in the in the cold in this car and goes from there and it is a wild ride it's fantastic kind of continuing on with our mystery theme um we have the guest house by lucy foley which i thought was really atmospheric in fact on the very first page it kind of set it up um there's a storm that happens during this story and i almost feel like the storm itself is almost a character in this in this story um and so talking about the storm it says it feels personal this storm it feels as though it has saved all of its fury for them um, so you you can feel this wind and you can feel this ominous presence because of this storm and it makes the whole atmosphere around this wedding even crazier. So this follows, um, we have a number of wedding guests. I think there's what, we follow the perspective of five. So we follow the perspective of the bride, the plus one, so one of the guests, the best man, the wedding planner, and the bridesmaid. Um, as they are on this very remote island off the coast of Ireland. There are a number of secrets involved as this very elegant wedding is taking on, but yet this storm is raging at the same time. It's quite the mystery. So it was, that was very atmospheric. And then the last two books I have are by the same author. So I just think it's the way Simone St. James writes. So we have The Sundown Motel as well as Broken Girls. These are both, um, psychological thrillers but again create quite the atmosphere within the broken girls we have dual timelines <coughs> so this takes place in vermont we have 1950 and 2014 so 1950 we're following the story of these girls that end up going to this boarding school and um it's kind of a boarding school meant for unruly girls maybe not your best behaved girls um, and this boarding school, I can still picture this place. I can still picture just the overall ominous feel of this place, um, both in both timelines. So present day, you have our main character trying to kind of solve the question of what happened to her sister. Her sister was found murdered on the grounds of this boarding school. And then you add in the element of Black Mary, which is a ghost, which haunts both stories, which is fabulous as well. There's this scene where she is there, like you know she's there and it's the super foggy field and the, the school is in the background. You can, I can still picture that. It was fantastic. And then for this setting, we have our main character, again, dual timelines, upstate New York. We have Viv Delaney in 1982, who ends up being the night clerk at the Sundown Motel, and she ends up going missing. And then 2017, we have Carly, who is the niece of Viv, who ends up going back to the same Sundown Motel, getting the same job Viv has to try to solve this mystery. And I read this while I was in a hotel, crazy because again this also involves ghosts and a bit of a haunting at this motel it was again very atmospheric i can still picture this motel i can picture what is happening what are these all phenomenal things that are happening again it it puts you right there it's fantastic so those are my amazing atmospheric books if you're looking for a book to just completely bring you into them these are it um highly recommend all of them so make sure you hop over to sarah's channel and check out what books she has picked for today um i'm sure there's some great ones i easily could have added like harry potter into this but i feel like that's an obvious one these were a little different so head over there see what she has picked for today otherwise like subscribe and i will see you next time bye